here. Anyway, we're going to uh, get the debate going. Ron? Hi. A while back, there was a rather prolonged thread on the Nan Nanog mailing list about how router-to-router -router IPv6 links should be numbered. And we're going to follow that up a little bit in this panel. Um, but before we start, let's uh, take a look at some of our options. RFC 4291 says that all uh, interfaces should be numbered from slash 64. It's nothing smaller. That's the status quo. But as it turns out, people aren't actually doing that um, in many cases. Lots of people are numbering from slash 112s, some from slash 126. If you think about it, in v4, you used a slash 30, which was two less than the maximum. 126, two less than the maximum. Many numbering from slash 127s, which uh, sidesteps a common, uh, common undesirable behavior in point-to-point -point links. Some people with 128s and some using unnumbered. So we're going to run through all of these possibilities and um, possibly come, come up with some consensus here and bring it back to the uh, V6 working group and the IETF with some proposal. Let's talk about the status quo for a minute. There's some benefit in uniformity. Some features, like duplicate address detection, rely on slash 64 numbering. Um, host detection is more uh, difficult, arguably, if you're scanning to see what hosts are behind an interface. And even though using a slash 64 on an interface with exactly two endpoints seems a bit wasteful, there's really enough uh, address space that this doesn't matter so much. problems with the status quo, uh, the biggest one in my mind is the behavior of some point-to-point -point implementations. Um, if you send a packet to a, um, an address that's on the subnetwork but not one of the endpoints, it'll ping-pong back and forth till the TTL expires. There's also the possibility of neighbor discovery attacks, and we consume more uh, address space than we need. Again, maybe not a problem because there's so much addressed space, but waste not, want not. In any event, at this point, I will step aside and let some of the proponents of other solutions, uh, the slash 112, the uh, slash 127, speak for themselves a little bit. Um, oops, <laughs> the slides have changed a little bit. Um, actually, why don't I step aside for a second, though, and let the 112 people... I'll go. Where's the uh, file here? Tuesday. All right, I'm Kevin Locke, and I was going to talk about uh, the 112 prefix length option, which is something that we, uh, that I have seen. I use that myself, and I've seen that in a number of other discussions on mailing lists, and uh, even in some. Yes. So 112 prefix length is something that I've seen in a number of uh, peering links and discussions, so I thought it might be uh, useful to, to try to d describe all the reasons that, that might be that people are using that. So it is a popular non-standard size. I actually found someone from uh, University of Pennsylvania put their V6 address plan uh, online, and that's a, a fairly typical example of how people are using 112s in their address planning. Uh, I think by far the most... Uh, interesting or useful uh, thing about 112 is that it's not 64. And the consequence of that is that on uh, all platforms that I'm aware of, that suppresses router advertisements and auto configurations. And in certain environments, such as router links and even uh, you know, links with some servers, that's very desirable. Uh, 112 is a obviously 16 bits, so that gives you uh, quite a bit of flexibility not just for point-to-point -point links, but for, um, excuse me. Should have done that before it came up here. So that does, so 16 bits is enough to number anything you can imagine from two routers on a link to uh, more than two routers on an Ethernet segment, which is fairly common, or with VERP, uh, which is very common in static routing uh, environments. Uh, and even server segments. I've used it on server segments, and it works great. So you can have one 
uh, one size, instead of having a mixed match of 126s here, 64s there, you could pick one size that's useful for a lot of different uh, activities. So why 112 and not uh, 114 or some other uh, random uh, length between 64 and 128? I think it's because it lines up on the uh, last colon boundary, so you have some very convenient numbering conventions if you choose to uh, allocate them sequentially. Uh, this allows you to have uh, things like colon 1 for router 1, colon 2 for router 2. And because it's 16 bits, you could even do some more creative things if you had a unique uh, number assigned to each router in your network. You could make uh, the link ID, the last, uh, whatever we call them, hextets or duo octets, you could make that a uh, unique router ID. So it would be colon 126 and colon 14. You know which exactly which two routers just by looking at the, uh, the IP address. Uh, one benefit of the small size of, relative small size of 112 is that you can number all of your loopbacks and all of your internal links out of a single size 64, which could be useful for things like control plane policing and rate limiting ACLs. You also have the flexibility, of course, of allocating them on slice 64 boundaries, which I know that uh, the other members of the panel advocate uh, for their particular designs. And uh, there's another reason you can't do that, but it looks like uh, most people do 112 sequentially. And the last one is a little tongue-in-cheek uh, because it's, whenever you talk about efficiency with IPv6, it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. A 112 is, uh, you know, you're using 16,000 addresses, but it's still 288, 218 trillion times more efficient than using a slash 64. And it just seems wrong to use 218 trillion or 1,000 billion addresses for a point-to-point -point link. So that's 112. And the, the one comment, oh. The one comment that make is one, 112 does not address the problem of ping pong or DOS attack. It, it reduces a bit. But. Right. I think uh, Igor will have more detailed discussion of that, but uh, that's true. Obviously, there's 16,000 possible addresses. Certainly a lot fewer than with 64, but that could still be enough to break things. I'm Rob Seastrom, and I admit to numbering my network with slash 64s, uh, much to the surprise of Igor and to the surprise of Raz. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is that you keep the um, – uniformity of addressing and the KISS principle. Uh, it turns out that IP address space in IPv6 land is actually really, really plentiful compared to technician brain cell space available. And the, we have the luxury here of being able to engineer for human factors rather than for machines. Uh, a lot of us have spent a, a really long time uh, with CIDR and have sort of grown to think of engineering things to be better for machines than for people as sort of the default. And we have the ability, now that we have IPv6 and uh, tons and tons of IP addresses, uh, to say, well, you know, we don't breathe slowly to conserve air. Perhaps we ought to allocate IPv6 addresses in a way that, uh, that makes it better for people than for machines. And I, I put something that looks sort of like barcode at the bottom of the screen here. And uh, it's intentional that it's difficult to figure out what's going on from the audience. But you'll notice that all the symbols in the lower, in the lower uh, rank are the same. And all the symbols in the upper rank are kind of mixed together. And if, if you have subnet allocations that are of different sizes on different types of interfaces, that's one more thing that you have to be thinking about at 3 a.m. when the phone rings. So this slide was stolen from the, from the previous, uh, uh, from Ron's deck. And um, yeah, the, these, are, these are all uh, advantages of the slash 64. Uh, why, why did that go backwards? So one of the things that uh, Igor and I discovered that when we were talking, and there's going to be, uh, Igor's going to talk about this in more detail, is that actually there's a difference between uh, the allocation and the configuration that you put on, on your box. And you might be allocating bigger pieces uh, with the notion that someday you might want to have slash 64s everywhere and to preserve that option because really you don't need to, pre you don't need to uh, save and conserve and, uh, every single possible IPv6 address that you have, uh, but allow yourself the flexibility of doing that in the future while today working around various vendor shortcomings by putting a longer prefix on your interfaces. 
Uh, waste not, want not, we already covered that. Uh, whatever you do, one of the things that I think horribly violates the keeping it simple for humans is having your subnet uh, allocation be on anything other than a nibble boundary because that's the symbol that humans are seeing. We're not, we don't work in binary. We work in, in larger symbols. They're an aggregation of those, those binary uh, values. I stole the slide from Ron. Uh, I'm Igor, and uh, I'm going to present an alternative uh, to uh, 64s and 112s that we've rolled out in production ourselves. Um, so first of all, what's wrong with 64? Well, in theory, nothing. Well, maybe there's a bunch of things wrong of why do we actually need 64 bits of host address space, but that ship has sailed a long time ago, so you know, let's just let it go. Unfortunately, in practice, that's there's a big gap between theory and standards and hardware implementation. And uh, the whole, let's put 64 everywhere, is actually uh, can cause operational problems. So what are the problems? Uh, Ron mentioned that there's the ping pong problem on Sonnet SDH links. This is because the entire semantics behind Sonnet SDH is I get a packet, if it's not addressed for me, and it's for the subnet that the, is a Sonnet SDH link, I shouldn't even look at what it is, I should just forward it on. Well, given the example, if one side is uh, column zero, the other side is column one, and you get a packet for column two, well, column zero, hey, that's not for me, send it to column one. Column one, hey, that's not for me, send it right back to column two. Uh, you, typical TTL could be either 64 to 55, and you might have gotten a packet amplification of 250x. Uh, it's a pretty easy DOS factor, isn't it? Um, the other issue is the ping sweep of death, and it doesn't need to be a ping sweep. Could be ACK packets, push ACK, send, you name it. Uh, assuming the link type is Ethernet, and the same address plan as above, if somebody, you know, hits double colon three, four, five, uh, dead beef, whatever, um, every time a router gets something to an unknown address, it's got to perform an NDP lookup, uh, the entire resolution chain. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen what happens when the router is busy dealing with four billion squared NDP lookups. Uh, it can't actually perform that lookup for colon one the next time colon one is supposed to expire. When your point-to-point -point links can't actually perform NDP resolution, your IGP tends to break. Uh, if your IGP or routing protocols in general in the router break, your network may be in a, about to melt down. Uh, so, Yes, these are implementation issues. Uh, these are hardware specific. Unfortunately, they're present in every vendor that I have seen. So again, is it really the fault of 64 that you know, it's a standard? No, it's a fault of implementation, but um, we are network operators. Our job is to make things work, and this does not work. So the question has been, yeah, all right, so we have to work on the 64 can we work around it differently than changing the address structure? Some people have proposed using ACLs. You know, you put ACLs everywhere that allow packets to uh, colon zero, colon one, block everything else. Uh, we manage quite a large number of ACL entries. Um, having to manage an ACL per interface for every interface in my network uh, is just non-scalable, uh, given that it has to be unique. So the other thing is, well, we know this is a problem with the forwarding semantics of Sonnet SDH, but just fix it. And there's been a you know, standard, uh, people have said this is how you fix it. Unfortunately, the forwarding semantic is something that's programmed into hardware. Uh, how long does a new spin of ASICs get to your routers? Every five years, every seven? So what do we do meanwhile? Similarly, can't we fix NDP queue prioritization? In theory, you could just say, well, if you've resolved this uh, NDP address before, then re-resolving it should get priority over looking up a new uh, address. That's great. Uh, that actually, I believe, is the right way to address it. Unfortunately, you ask a vendor for a new feature lately? Did they tell you that you're going to get it in less than 18 months? Anybody? 
Sure so not telling that to me. So in summary, we need something that works now because we're deploying IPv6 now. Uh, we need something that we can manage, and uh, we need something that will actually fix these issues because otherwise um, bad guys out there have a really easy way to take down our networks uh, that currently don't suffer from these issues. So how do we do it? Well, as uh, Robert mentioned, um, there's a difference between allocation and assignment and configuration. So allocating 64s doesn't actually cause a problem. The problem is when you configure the 64 on a point-to-point -point link. So why don't you just allocate a 64, take the first 127 of that 64, and that's what you configure in the router. At this point, you suffer from none of the drawbacks of putting 64s and even 112s on a router interface. You make it really easy for humans to read. I don't know about you guys, but at 3 a.m., I know that column zero is you know, the upper end and column one is the lower end, and that's the same on all of my interfaces. That's great. That's easily readable. Um, you follow the same allocation plan for your whole network. 64 is supposed to be servers, 64 allocation to point to point, it's just a different assignment and configuration plan. And best of all, you can deploy this today. And this is actually how we've done this, uh, and it has worked really well for us. So uh, at this point, I guess we turn it over to questions. Or possibly uh, any rebuttal. If, yeah, uh, or rebuttal from panelists. Hello, Aaron Hughes. Is this uh, mic still good? Can you guys actually hear up there at this point? Yeah. Excellent. So I have to say that I, I like uh, Igor's solution the best of all of these uh, so far. Um, I do have a couple of issues with the 112, uh, as Kevin was suggesting. Um, for a few reasons, one of which um, I'm surprised actually uh, RS didn't mention, which is regional aggregation off the top or bottom of your blocks uh, for numbering loopbacks into your separate regional space rather than aggregating all of your loopbacks globally into the same space. What, what you uh, pull from, from where and, and how you number loopbacks was sort of outside the scope of what we wanted to talk about, but I completely agree. Understood. So then I'll skip that. Um, the other point that wasn't mentioned, which is quite useful for, um, uh, or a pro reason for using 64s, is software that you, have, you store v4 addresses in. Today, if you happen to cast five integers, so four octets and a net mask, a standard in cast of 11 size, um, uh, or, or 11 uh, digit integer, uh, you can easily store your slash 64s as decimal instead of hex in those exact same spots and then just check to see if it's greater or less than 32 and don't have to rewrite your software too much. Fair enough. By the way, if, if you are um, supportive of the slash 127 proposal, there is a draft in the six man working group. The title of the draft eludes me, but it's on numbering point to point links. You might want to subscribe to that working group and um, comment on it. I'll post a link to the working group uh, mailing list and uh, a link to the draft after this meeting. Sure. And, and one, one last point, another reason to support Igor's suggestion is I've now seen two vendors uh, implementation for NMSs where they auto-aggregate on slash 64s so your links uh, turn into a big single glob of links. Um, and while that's a software support issue, uh, it's still what's in implementation today. Thank you. Middle mic. Little mic. Uh, hi, my name is Joel. I work for Slide. I read that thread, and I guess I listened to somebody else, and I did slash 126s. Um, what I have is just a very simple tool that every one of my point-to-point -point IPv4 IP addresses can be easily converted to an IPv6. It's you know it's going to turn into a, a hex versus a decimal, but it's a uh, a very easy, quick conversion. I had to do 126s, not 127s, because of the bit boundary. But um, it's a really simple, easy conversion for everybody on my team to say, "Hey, I know the IPv4. What's the IPv6?" And mm -hmm. it's a simple one. So I would just advocate that it, it has a little bit of the uh, keep it simple, and it has a little bit of the uh, historical matching. Um, but nobody's on the panel saying that, so I wanted to get that in there. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, if I can respond to that, uh, at least for us, one of the reasons why we wanted uh, as little correlation between v4 and v6 in our address, in the host side of the address structure, is that you could put that correlation into the network side of the subnet. 
Uh, and at that point, you know, as long as you put that correlation on the network side, the host side can still be 127 or 126. And basically, the smaller you go, the less of a ping pong and amplification and NDP attack you open yourself up to. So if you go with a 126, eh, you know, multiplication factor of two, not so bad. Uh, you go with a 124 that goes to eight and so on. And there's definitely going to be cases where you're going to want to do something larger than a 127 because you've got two VRPs on your uh, you've got a VRP on your side, two IPs, you've got a VRP uh, on you know, customer side and whatnot. Uh, but basically, use the smallest that you can, allocate the 64, but assign the smallest block that makes sense for you. Yeah. Next. Hello, uh, Donnie Roisman, The Planet. Question, can you clarify what the Sonnet-related issue was? I, the NDP stuff makes sense for Ethernet, but w what was a Sonnet issue that was occurring? Okay. Let's say for a moment that you've numbered from a slash 64. Um, let's say numbers uh, 1 and 2 out of that slash 64 are used. Can you go to the next slide? Oh, next slide? Back. Okay. Um, assume that we have this slash 64 configured. Somebody pings 2001 DBA2. It's neither of the endpoints. The first router who receives the packet sends it to the other one, assuming he has it. For the same reason, the other one sends it back to the first one, and the packet ping pongs back and forth till the TTL expires. It's part of the Sonnet SDH semantics that basically right. says, if it's not for me, then I forward it. There is no, it. the semantics don't have a split horizon poison reverse concept. Okay, thank you. I have a um, question for Igor from Stan Barber. And he wants to know, um, how do you address concerns? He doesn't say which concerns, but he says, how do you address the concerns with slash 127 that are summarized in uh, RFC 3627, which is, um, I don't know if anybody selected that in the last 15 years or so, but. Uh, I think some of the concerns have to do with mobility and uh, also the route, uh, Southern Router Anycast. Uh, every implementation that I'm aware of that supports 127 actually turns off subnet router anycast. And uh, if somebody can give me a good reason to be running any sort of v6 mobility on my point-to-point -point links, uh, you know, I, I would love to learn. <laughs> so I was just wondering whether we should take a straw poll of the audience to see who in the audience prefers which technique. Let's give it a try. So who, who goes for slash 64s? And 126s? Uh, 112s? And 127s? Well, it's a okay. clear majority. Um, Can so I ask for further clarification uh, for anything other than a slash 64? Do you uh, configure your router with the prefix that you held your hand up for, but reserve <laughs> a bigger chunk of address space for future mind-changing activities? Does anybody else do that? I've got a few. And any mask. Uh, it, it's, you know, if, 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 you, if you are doing a 127, I mean, Igor and I actually turn out to be violently in agreement on most of this. Yeah, I mean, there's a clear distinction between allocation and configuration. And uh, I think anybody who allocates every 127 out of slash 64, uh, you may be creating more problems that you're trying to solve because at 3 a.m., uh, 2001 DBA column column and FEC zero. Uh, which side is that? What is this? But zero and one makes sense. And I've been accused of being you know, using the billionaire mentality uh, when it comes to assignment and allocation of V6 space. Uh, you should have a trillionaire mentality. Uh, I think uh, RS uh, said yesterday that if you uh, take uh, peanut M&Ms. Uh, and you fill all of the Great Lakes with peanut M&Ms, 
like drain the lakes and you fill them with peanut M&Ms, that's a single slash 64's worth of IPs. You are a quadrillionaire when it comes to IPv6 there, there, there space in the subnet. There's an important disclaimer here that you should not attempt to eat a slash 64 <laughs> worth of. Yeah, so don't try to conserve address space for v6. It's, you don't need to. Just make it easy, make it readable, make it scalable, and best of all, make it work. Danny? So yeah, uh, Danny McPherson, I was just going to make the observation that if uh, the one reason you may want to allocate those slash 127s out of one slash 64 is from a ACL or, you know, sort of control plane policing or other policy configuration management perspective, uh, you at least want to keep your slash 64s contiguous and, and so that you minimize that policy so that at 3 a.m. your argument holds from that perspective as well. So, Well, again, you could just allocate all the 64s out of a single 48. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Is so, yeah. so, I mean, I'm sure you would want to have that for the backbone links either way, but you definitely want them to be contiguous, so it may hold it either way, that argument. Yeah, or, I mean, or, or, or more likely the bottom 48 for each area or however you chop your network up not to overlook over aggregatability. I think, I think there is a temptation or a risk when you're doing allocating, regardless of what you configure, but allocating on 64-bit boundaries to do that where you may have mix and match, like you throw customers in there if you're not very careful and disciplined about how you're assigning that. Whereas with other sizes, uh, if you're going sequentially with 112s, you're not as likely to do that because you probably aren't going to use those with very many customers. Well, cognizant of the fact that I'm the one thing standing between you and lunch and probably some peanut M&Ms, I'd like to thank the panelists and uh, thank you. Thank you, Ron. And thank